when we sit and understand with compassion, I think a human being is a lot willing to open up if they don't feel like they're judged straight off the bat, which I find is a massive issue with entrepreneurship. People feel judged and that's why they don't go and ask for help. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky and today we have an amazing guest lined up for you. Her name is Nadia Arain and she owns the website thespartanite.com. How are you, Nadia? I'm so good. Thank you for asking, Rick. And I'm very honored to be on your show and share my expertise with your great listeners. Yeah, well, welcome back because I know that we had some technical issues last time around <laughs> and it's often the case, isn't it, with technology? Right, absolutely. But it's something that if something positive comes out of it, it's, as you said, it's um, a good lesson and a good learning curve. Yeah, so look, like we spoke about off air, we're, we are aimed at um, beginner entrepreneurs and small to medium sized business owners. And we're looking today at self sabotaging limiting beliefs that are going to stop entrepreneurs playing out their best game. But before we go into that, Nadia, I'd love to go right back to the start with your life story, because I think that's really important for the context of the call today. Would you mind sharing a bit about yourself with us? Yeah, sure, of course. I think with Spark Night, um, the main thing that I would say is that it was a concept that came to me about seven years ago. I was quite young at the time, and I was processing a very difficult, emotionally abusive relationship that had ended. I didn't know it at the time, and I was in a lot of pain and I remember just sitting at my laptop and saying I don't want any other woman to feel this way I need to do something about it so instead of maybe going for retail therapy or eating chocolate I wanted to be constructive so I decided to write the first two chapters of my book I was I mean I was trying to clean my tea, my, my keyboard from tears I was crying but a lot of good things did come out of it and I didn't really know anything about Spark Night at the time I just wanted to um, give women encouragement and make them feel good about themselves and I didn't want them to feel the way I did and that's really like the tiny origin of it so I started from there finished off the book in about nine ten months um, I stalled in between with it and then I started to think I don't know what to name this trial so I went back in time and I looked at a lot of different ancient cultures and Spartans stood out to me a lot because of, well, quite obviously, you know, their work ethic, their strength, their courage, their fortitude, and I started reading up on different things like maybe their nearby Athenian sisters in Athens, and I looked that Spartan ladies had a lot more freedom, they had a lot more independence, um, and they were actually women who had their own character, they did not rely on a man for fulfillment and validation. They were um, whole within themselves and they were just a good complement to the man, which to me was quite inspirational. I looked at very many different things that Spartan women have. So I was obviously quite inspired and the name Spark Knight came up in my head. Um, so I decided to run with it and I named my first book The 21st Century Spark Knight, The Strong Woman's Guide to Ultimate Success. So I wrote 11 chapters of it and that was it. I started writing books afterwards and I had um, a business that did not work out years ago. Um, it was a day spa and then after that I went through extreme trials, adversity, tribulations and as I started to recover my own story and repair myself, I went from just a book spark night to creating the whole brand as a structure of empowerment. First, the first thing um, as sort of the storyboard evolved was I wanted to give women that sort of, um, I wanted to more lean towards financial independence for women or financial empowerment as in teaching actual a metaphysic, occult and psychic ways of bringing in a lot of money without mm -hmm. struggling for it. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that and I include that is because there are so many beginner entrepreneurs and there are so many people that may be listening to this show that, you know, again, with those self-sabotage limiting beliefs that we feel like we need to work really hard to make money. Yeah. And it's just, Rick, it's not just about working hard. You have to work smart as well, mm. which I think so many people miss out. So as the brand evolved, um, I started to see a lot of men approach me that were really, really upset. And they were like, well, you have all this for women. <laughs> what are you doing for <laughs> men? Um, 
like, okay, that makes sense. I, I saw a lot of men reach out. In fact, funny enough that I found men understanding Spotlight because of Spartan, obviously 300, they got the message quicker than the women. The men were in alignment quicker with it. So I was like, okay, well, I really do want to help men. I want to help men um, be great leaders, be confident, balance out their emotions where they don't feel like they have to get to a place where their ego, their money, their status is validating them as a human being, as a dad, as a brother, as a lover, as whatever it is that yeah. they can bring to the table where they can stand in authentic emotion and authentic leadership and also have balance. So at present, I'm still creating the courses of Spark Night Man, but you know, I really um, enjoy working with men and I enjoy the balance. And traditionally, what I thought or started out as a structure of empowerment for women um, has been very balanced out because I did not want to base Spark Night on feminine empowerment and leave men out because there's no true empowerment if men are not empowered with us as well. That's some great insights and great feedback. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. I, I'm always interested because I, get, I, I speak with a lot of people who are interested in becoming authors and they're, they're overwhelmed by the idea. Was it a very difficult journey for you to, to write, write your book? Um, that's really interesting. I have quite a few titles published, so I'm going to go back. Spark Night in itself, truly, I had no idea. I used to see people like running these boot camps, like, you know, they probably saw like a 97 pound program, like, yeah, here, we'll come write your book. And it just felt contrived, it felt boring, it yeah. just felt a system to get money, and I was bored. So, my first title, and I share that quite candidly, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just had a manuscript, and I mm -hmm. started approaching self-publishers. I worked with a great self-publisher who helped me do that. After that, I didn't use a proper standard self-publisher. I went to Amazon. I self-published on Amazon, and that's what I do, the rinse and repeat. And I'm more than happy to share that with anybody that chooses to listen to this and reaches out to me. It's a very simple process, and the whole process can be practically maybe under like 100 pounds or something, whichever if that's in Australian or United States dollars or whichever currencies in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more about... Um, establishing yourself as, and you know, a lot of people write books and they're, you know, sorry to say they're just crappy, you know, they just write the book and it's yeah. like a 12 year There's no substance, it's not like, wow, this person's really put their intelligence, their thought, their wit, and there's a creative flair to writing, so mm -hmm. they don't really have so I decided to do that, and for me, I, I pride myself when I look at like five-star reviews, not to make my ego feel good, but to make to make me think, wow, what I put out there, people are actually reading it and they're benefiting from it. And I write to really educate people. It's more for people because to, you can write anything. You can sit at your laptop or your desktop and write anything and call it a day. But I have so many topics that I wish to share and educate with people that I found books a great and cost-effective way. Because look, not everybody can afford an X amount of thousand dollar program, but everybody can afford maybe a fifteen twenty dollar pound book or whatever it is yeah. that educate you. So I found it cost effective and I also found it a fantastic way for lead generation. I've had people bought my books and they're like, oh, we came to your website through your book X and wow, we really like your work. So there are always ways that one can seed in to work more with a person if there are, of course, any aspiring entrepreneurs or even people that are in the beginning of their journey. Um, it's not particularly about hard work. Yes, I definitely commend you know, strong work ethic. I'm sure you have that, Rick, and I'm sure we have that, otherwise we wouldn't be, <laughs> we wouldn't be here. <laughs> But I think the most important thing is smart work. It's not just like, I was reading a book, and probably you've probably read it as well, The Richest Man in Babylon, and it's mm -hmm. not just collecting buckets of water, it's about building a pipeline so that 10 years time you're not just collecting buckets, you can turn on a tap and everything flows in. And that's one of the major things that I find in self-sabotage. Yeah. So people are just looking for this get rich quick thing and there's, there's get rich simple but there's not get rich quick because that and I find people who have that type of consumer, per, um, not personality but maybe consumer mindset or they have this sort of greed because that's what get rich quick is, it's greed. They're people who are susceptible to con artistry because if someone sold you a dream and you buy it yeah. without 
that business truly is a lot of hard work and you know people are more interested in the process of the business who are other businesses as opposed to people who are not who are just like okay what's the event where's your nice shiny car where's your like, millions of dollars in the bank because that's what they think sort of constitutes as you made it but what truly helps people make it is the process and the adversity and maybe any lonely nights and self-doubt and all those kind of things that the dark side of entrepreneurship that I usually talk about in a lot of my work that people don't want to admit. Um, I guess that gives you a position of authority just having that life experience and having some as you call it tribulations and some pretty dark moments in your life. Now how does that transfer um, to the way in which you engage with uh, a man or a woman as the case may be who comes to you for help with um, setting up their businesses and and correcting their mindset if it isn't in the right place? I would say compassion. Um, I've, I've gone through a lot of adversity when I was younger but truly my adversity when I'm sure as you read everything got taken away from me. I had no money, no hope, no prospects, no nothing and it, it gives me a place of compassion. It gives me a place of relation, like true compassion, not just you look at someone and be like, oh, you know, sort of like I guess how people look at homeless people and just be like, oh, here's, here's money, like get away from me type of thing mm. as opposed to you sitting down with a person, empathizing with them, asking if they've eaten, truly understanding that that could be you, you know, and that could have been me very many years and I just practically escaped it by a hairline. So what I want to say is compassion would be the answer. Compassion and understanding of knowing that each person, that could be you. And, you know, we have as business owners come from a place where it's not like where you are today and the knowledge you have, you were born with it. You've probably gone through a lot in your own life. You've probably really chopped and changed up things and you've had a lot of self-doubt in the way which is something that people don't particularly pay mind to. I find that a lot of people forget where they come from. Yeah. They forget compassion. I don't want to say that you still have to act in the same way or be on the same vibration but I think compassion is necessary if somebody has a, say for instance basically what you've asked me, if you have a child and your son or daughter comes to you and says, look, mom, dad, I drew a cow. And you, you look at it and you're like, oh, my goodness, what is this? It just looks, <laughs> what is this? You're just like, where's the cow? Where's the legs? Where's the feet? <laughs> you don't say that to the child. You don't, you don't cut the poor child down. You just say, wow, this looks like the best cow I've ever seen. What are you making next? A dog, a sheep, a pig? You know, you, you try and encourage that. And I've had clients that have come to me where... Whatever they may have come with doesn't make any sense, but eventually when we sit and understand with compassion, I think a human being is a lot willing to open up if they don't feel like they're judged straight off the bat, which I find is a massive issue with entrepreneurship. People feel judged, and that's why they don't go and ask for help. And I love your approach. I, you know, this whole idea of putting the person in front of you first is what you're saying, rather than going for the jugular, going for that, that quick sale, you know. That's a very masculine way of doing things. That's traditionally what men do, and that's why there's so much men have so much pain in their life that they obviously don't know they're in that much pain. Because I see that there's so many guys that are looking. We don't really have, especially in the Western world, we don't have um, strong masculine role models who are balanced in their emotions, who take the time to actually understand someone else. Because what a lot of toxic masculinity has done is it teaches men in no and explicit terms that. Uh, if you're not aggressive, you don't go and sort of bitch slap and grab something, you're not man enough. And that, that doesn't make you a man, that just makes you somebody who's coming from a scarcity mindset where you're afraid of, if I don't quickly ask for the sale, there's something wrong. There's a difference between being bold, but this is the reason, and I'm sure maybe you agree, you don't agree, to me cold calling would just be a complete waste of time. because. You need to have a relationship. I need to understand that person because I just don't want someone's money. Like, there's a lot of, not all money is good money in business, no, as I'm I sure you agree with you. Yeah, some people are just a headache, and you're like, I don't care how much you pay me, you're just a headache. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interested. <laughs> okay. And you're truly understanding of someone's situation, you're going to get faster results as opposed to, oh, hi, I'm Rick, I have a program, Nadia, I want to sell you to this. Well, I don't want your program, I don't know you, and I don't even like you, so pushy. 
And that's where people make the mistake of that's why they say I don't like sales because people are trying to squeeze something down their throat. Now, truly, if you're in alignment and Rick, you say to me, look, I may be struggling with uh, my finances or you know, I've tried all the marketing that I've tried to do in my business, but you know, gosh, I just don't know what's wrong. I'll probably sit with you. I'll try and understand your mindset. And then through my way of um, psychic ability or magical ability, whatever it is I want to call it, I will do things for you that naturally put you in alignment with money. So instead of simply trying to chase money, you will have money chase you. And that's traditionally when I teach women, I teach them um, dark feminine principles, I even teach men this as well, and I teach them to really honor like those emotions inside. And when I say dark, I really don't mean evil, I just want to make that very clear to people. It, dark to me is everything that society tells us to repress. So men with emotion in general, if a man feels emotional, in other words, he, want, he doesn't want to show emotion because he thinks it's weak. Women um, can't express anger because, oh, she's an angry woman. So imagine having a space in life where your lust is validated or verified, your revenge is validated, you want to kill somebody, it's validated. You know, those are all natural human emotions that society tells us to to suppress and then we wonder why people are in mental psychic bondage and they're going crazy. And I, when you have a space where you can just sit and feel what you feel, now you somebody may have got under your skin so much and that you truly do want to kill them. Now is it a healthy thing to do that? No. But the problem is you can't just shunt and force those emotions down. You probably can sit in dark room, think about it, you know, really feel that in your body and let it go. Because people don't honor themselves and how they feel, which is why they end up with so many mental illnesses, physical illnesses, and that comes back to business. They're not honest. They don't face themselves with honesty and humility, which is why so many men are addicted to vices. They're going, and this is no judgment on people's lifestyles. Of but to strip clubs every week, they're going drinking, smoking. I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad, but I believe 95% of those men, if we truly sat them down and they could face their life with honesty and humility and say, you know what, I'm just, I don't know where I'm going. I feel alone, or lost, confused, and I know that society tells me that I need to know everything as a man, but I don't. To really have that courage and vulnerability to us would put that man miles ahead of everyone else. There's a lot of gender pain. There's a lot of masculine feminine rift between women and men. And you know, I I still remember in our, our previous tech weekly challenge call, <laughs> I was <laughs> I was speaking about feminism and the pain that feminism has caused society, mm -hmm. the pain feminism has caused women in itself, the pain that it's caused men, and the wider socioeconomic um, some situations that basically have arisen from it. And what I said was that feminism initially was a very good concept. It was a concept of peace. It was a concept of something where women can be heard and now it's just turned into uh, degeneracy, lunacy. Women have become insolent. They've become, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just mannerless. That's what I want to say. And I'm not saying this is all women. Mm -hmm. But when especially local, a lot of women, they have this sense of, is this sense of um, entitlement on their shoulder, like, why should I cook a clean, why should I do this, why should I do that, it's like, look, you're living in a house, you're going to do it anyway, but the sad bit is that because they're out of alignment with their feminine nature, which I'm obviously going to touch now for women, a lot of women have been told, um, in no uncertain terms, just like I said about men, that if they're feminine, feminine means weak, it means needy, it means clingy, it means codependent, and a lot of women are sort of, they're, they're in pain because of two models. You get number one, who women are living with that sort of very disempowered feminine where they're just waiting kind of like for Prince Charming, which that's not healthy. And then you get number two, where women are so tired of that model, which I understand from experience, that they go to a place where essentially in corporate. What does corporate do? Corporate is a masculine environment where you go for the jugular and that's not a uh, that's not a normal way of a woman's doing things and it will take a toll on your body because your adrenal glands as a woman cannot replenish as fast as a man. Mm. So if, if both of us worked at the same pace, you, I would be tired quicker than you and I, I work so much as a woman simply because, you know, um, 
from biological programming perspective, you obviously a man, you're physically much stronger and you are able to replenish that testosterone or your adrenaline, which I think so many women that I have found that come to me, especially from the corporate realms, they struggle. And women struggle to admit, I'm tired, I'm fed up, I don't want to do it like a man, I'm sick of doing it like a man, I'm sick of everything. Mm. But then they think, what's the other option? So what I decided to do in Spirit Night is really empower women. It's start out with the dark feminine, really sit with them, really try and honor their emotion. If you're tired, you want to cry, please do that, because that way we can get to the core of what's going on. And then obviously teach them, um, you know, very strong feminine principles where one can be very feminine, very yielding, very soft, very calm, as well as obviously have that sort of warrior princess type of energy, a warrior, warrior queen, where you can balance, you know, very strong boundaries of, you know, no BS, no nothing, as opposed to uh, you don't let that harden you. So it's kind of interesting. I guess what I teach women to be is a peach, the fruit a peach, because on the outside it's quite soft, it's juicy, but on the inside it's got a very hard pit. So, you know, I, most women are the opposite way around. They, they're hardened on the outside, but when you get past that sort of um, that chip on the shoulder, the, the I, I don't want to call it robustness because it's not robust, and it's something that a lot of women feel that they need to, that shield they need to put around them to protect them. They're actually quite vulnerable. I do the opposite. I strengthen women on the inside, and I strengthen men on the inside, so that they can be very um, you know soft and yielding, sort of like a flexible bamboo stick, but very strong that you can beat someone as well. So. <laughs> You, you have some amazing insight. What is the best way for people to contact you and what is the process that you take them through when you first meet someone? Yes, sure, of course. So the best way to usually contact me is through our website, which is www.thesparknight.com. Alternatively, you can also um, email us at support at thesparknight.com or find us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, at the spark night and traditionally when somebody comes to me what I will do is get them to book a consultation where I will sit I will really understand what that person is going through because I think each person we don't have problems in life we have perspectives of problems and when we you don't look at that and I have to sit with that person it's a man or woman for one person it might be you need this for the other person it might be actually I need to mentor you so it's different for everyone mm. but what I can guarantee is that I I get fast results. All the marketing strategies, all the business coaching, everything is great. Mm. That will work with your conscious mind. It is a very good way of starting. But what I go is probably 10 levels deeper. I don't just go to like hypnosis and go to the conscious or subconscious mind. I go to the cellular body. I go to your DNA. I go to your RNA. And I literally program and change all that around in your body. Because many frequency is just an energy. And money in itself has a frequency and an energy. And if you are in alignment with that energy, you don't have to work too hard. And you don't have to do... 10,000 Facebook ads and, and Google ads and do this and I think a lot of new entrepreneurs are just so overwhelmed they're just like I'm fed up I'm doing this 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 it's like a hamster on the wheel mm. whereas we just put them in alignment and I say okay this is what you need to do let's do this and let's go ahead so it, it, in a nutshell to answer your question it's not particularly about what um what's like the I guess like how people look at it in like their sales pipeline like oh what's the stages for me I speak to someone and it's always a done for you custom which I guarantee will work for that person based on me reprogramming their cellular body if you're listening to this call and and you are lacking in some way shape or form reach out to Nadia at the spartanite.com Nadia it's been an absolutely jam-packed um, session that I've had with you today I've really enjoyed it thanks for being on the my future business show today thank you it's been an absolute pleasure and the doors are open we will always be there to serve you thank you so much for having me it's been fun having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and make sure you leave us a comment, share us with your friends, and join the growing list of leading entrepreneurs who have enjoyed their time on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews.